All right, everybody, we're going to get started this morning. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so thank you for attending. This session is the exercise bowels, not your field crew, leveraging technology to streamline workflows. Um, our first speaker today is Daphne Brown. Daphne is a geospatial training and sports specialist at Duncan and Parnell. She provides training and technical support to clients utilizing GNSS receivers and GIS software. She focuses on Trimble Unity remote monitoring um, please hold your questions till the end of the session. Um, for our virtual attendees, please enter your questions in the chat box. Also, be sure to make sure your name is correct and the Zoom login to get credit for attending. Um, this session is being recorded and will be available on the conference website in a few weeks. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Daphne. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. As you said, my name is Daphne Brown, and I'm a geospatial training and support specialist at Duncan Parnell. So in my role, I help our clients through different stages of their GIS workflow. This can range from technical support to helping them integrate a new hardware or software solution. And I'm primarily focused in asset management for utilities. So before joining Duncan Parnell, I worked for a small municipality as their GIS technician. and. I was also at the time the only JS personnel. So being the only person, I dabbled in a lot of different departments to meet the town's geospatial needs. And this was my first introduction to asset management and utilities. And at the time, being very new to this, it was very overwhelming. Um, I did not know what's going on most of the time. And I was like trying to learn these terminologies and these new functions. And I remember lamenting to a friend about how complex it was. And I said, did you, did you know valves need to be exercised? Have you even heard of that? And she jokingly remarked, huh, like jumping jacks? So that remark is what inspired the title of my talk today, Streamline GS Utilities, Exercise Valves, Not Your Field Crew. And my hope is that with how strenuous, exer uh, sorry, with how strenuous asset management is, the emphasis is on using tools and different solutions so that it doesn't feel like you yourself is being exercised, but rather implementing things that'll help alleviate any extra stress. Okay, so just as a baseline to start off, just with defining asset management. So an asset is equipment or mechanisms that have a physical location and a purpose to utility network. A work order is what is capturing the maintenance related to that asset. And asset management is a system to manage records and history associated with the maintenance of an asset. So asset management is so crucial because it's giving you an insight into what is going on in your system. And if you work in utilities, this is all very familiar to you, just to create a baseline here as I go forward. Um, very significant in knowing what's going on. So starting off simple, um, we have this fire hydrant here that let's say it needs an inspection. So then we send out a work order. That work order is coming back with not only information about the inspection, but then also inspection metadata about who collected it, when they collected it, et cetera. So in that one example of one asset, one inspection, one work order, it's very straightforward. But as more assets are getting introduced, um, more different types of maintenance, it's gonna get a lot more complex really quickly. So there's two key ways to assign that work order that I mentioned going with that fire hydrant example, either through a piece of paper or through a digital system that would be um, cloud centric and going to your mobile device. And I mentioned that I was a GIS technician and when I was um, working as a technician, the job of taking all of the paper work order information and then digitally inputting it was my job. So I would be going through a stack of papers at the end of the week after all the work orders had been done and entering meter change outs. Um, and I'd be going through and then I would get a little thought in the back of my head of, oh no, did I enter that number correctly? So then I'd go back and double check and then I would go keep moving forward and then go back and double check. And then after completing that whole stack of entry, go back and double check one more time just to be sure. So it created a lot of extra work for me and it just created so much more room for human error versus in a digital workflow, 
this would all be mitigated because it going straight from the field back to the office. And for the field crew that I work with, having a digital system would have been very beneficial to them as well. Being able to configure conditional statements that we're gonna prompt different responses based on what they entered would have been very helpful for them rather than having to go through and fill out the entire form. Having those conditional statements um, could have saved time on their end as well. So, so overall, that was my experience and my personal challenge with asset management was especially the learning curve and then on top of that, the data entry portion. And now in my position as a trainer, before I go to a training, I encounter a lot of different concerns and comments before training, but listed here are the three main common challenges and concerns when I show up for a training and we're implementing a new asset management solution. And the I'll go through um, the solutions to each of these as I go through the presentation, but just to introduce them. The first one would be reservation about change. Um, this would be most common that if we bring up this new hardware or software, it seems like it's gonna be a lot harder to learn um, and make it a lot more complicated and the way that we have it works already. So why change? Um, the next common challenge that I face is a lot of places have data, but they're not sure how good it is. Um, maybe it was collected a couple years ago by a summer intern and meh, and, or they come to me and they say, it was collected a really long time ago by a different receiver. And we don't know since new receivers come out, is it still even up to par? We're not sure. We just have data, but it's there, we don't know. Um, and the last common challenge or concern that I often get is, now that you've been here for training, we understand what's going on, but we're not sure if we'll be able to keep the systems in place to be able to continuously update and min, um, maintain this. Or if the one person that you leave, um, you work with uh, for the training leaves, then this is all gonna fall apart. So these are big issues, understandably, before going into um, a training to implement a new solution. And um, I want to highlight today the city of Martinsville, Virginia, because I had a training with them and they're a fantastic example of a municipality that was able to overcome these challenges. So before working with the city of Martinsville, Virginia, their utility department that I worked with actually did not have any previous GIS experience. So they were able to, throughout this training um, and their hard work after the fact, were able to meet their training objective, which was to create a comprehensive asset management map for their water and sewer systems. And they were able to transition to an app-based management solution for app asset management. So before going into this, one of their driving factors for wanting this one uniform map was they had different data in three different softwares. And it was, you'd go into one software or one application to see one layer um, and continuing to open different layers um, in different applications. And it was very hectic. So they wanted to streamline that into one comprehensive map. So to accomplish that, they utilized two uh, main platforms. The first being ArcPro and ArcGIS Online, and that was utilized for geoprocessing and web mapping capabilities. And they also utilized Trimble Unity for their work order management solution. So since this is an ArcGIS users conference, um, I'm assuming everyone's pretty familiar with ArcGIS Online and ArcPro, so I won't spend too much time on it, but just for context of this presentation, I'll spend a little time giving an overview of Trimble Unity for work management. So it is a cloud-based GIS-centric asset management solution, and it can be configured to consume your web maps and feature service layers from ArcGIS Online and build customizable applications and work orders within Trimble Unity. And then that data can then be sent back to ArcGIS Online. So for this presentation, I'm only gonna focus on the water solution that we focused on during training. And they already had their water lines um, covered and properly mapped. So the key players that they wanted to focus on were where are our hydrants, valves, and water meters? 
And then we needed to focus on how we would update, maintain, and perform different inspections on each of these. And I have um, some examples in the presentation of screenshots and things, but I did not use their data just to protect their data for security purposes. So I've just replicated their same workflow, but um, in our own instance. So to accomplish this goal that they had, they first needed to define their existing data because similar to a lot of other towns that I've worked with, they had data, but they didn't know how good it was. Um, they needed to create a system for their work orders, how they were gonna look, how they were gonna be standardized, and then ultimately how they were gonna continue to manage this. As, as I mentioned, they didn't have any previous GIS experience. Um, so it was a little intimidating to go from this transition. So as I've said a few times now, had data, but they weren't sure how useful. So they knew that their water lines were in good shape and properly mapped and stored, but their valves and hydrants and water meters were questionable. So before I had arrived for training, a couple of years before I was there, there was someone who was managing all of these assets for them. After they left, that kind of fell apart and no one else knew how to continue to update it no one knew how to get this data so that it could be useful. So they were able to luckily export that as a CSV file. And then we were able to bring that into Arc Pro and see that that data was showing spatially um, and able to get it out of this other software. So off the bat, based on how the water meters were clustering, they were determined to be a not useful data set, but the valves and hydrants showed to be promising based on where they were spatially displaying. So then we brought that into a web map in ArcGIS Online. And if you notice, this is actually somewhere in here is where we are. So this is just an example of their workflow, um, but recreated in my instance uh, for their security. But if you see there, we've got their symbology brought in. And then it was time to move on to creating an application in Trimble Unity. And this could be um, a very long talk in itself, but just for a really broad overview, creating this application was solely focused on their water assets. So in this water assets app, they were able to configure a workflow pertaining to their hydrants, valves, and water meters to go out and collect new ones and perform inspections and update as need be. That's all stored in the workflow portion of this application. So ultimately, what we needed to do was figure out if these hydrants and valves were useful before moving forward. So we created a work order to check these locations and then go out and spatially map them, bring them back in and compare the location. And ultimately, the locations that were collected in comparison to the previous data set matched up within the accuracy thresholds that they were looking for. So they were able to validate that the hydrants and valves were, were, were useful data sets. So they did not then need to just throw in the towel and say, we don't know if it's good or not, but we'll just go back and recollect. So they were able to sp save a lot of time by recognizing the hydrants and valves were useful. Water meters, on the other hand, would need to be recollected, but um, save them a lot of time from just assuming that it was not useful. So that's kind of a brief overview of how that system is gonna look of those water meters, uh, sorry, uh, work orders coming through and being able to update the asset. And this is also is configurable with um, GNSS receivers. So it's giving you that high accuracy location um, with the asset you're collecting. So ultimately, as I just said, they were able to validate this existing data and use that moving forward to know where they were going. So their next issue, oops, sorry about that. Okay. Screen time. Yep, okay. So their next challenge was, so their next challenge was creating an effective method to assign and create work orders. So looking at this map, they just had a bunch of, they had a lot of points. Um, how are you gonna break that down and figure out where you're gonna go? Where are you gonna update the new points? Where are you going to 
collect, to where you're going to start inspections. So they need to create a method to perform this process. So they so they were able to decide that they wanted to perform this spatially by streets. So they were able to select large streets at a time to assign work orders to them. So they assigned work orders to these hydrants of valves that they could update as needed, and then ultimately go through and collect new water meters. And then as they progress through this process of uh, creating this database, they can now go through and do the same with inspections. And what is um, very handy for them that in real time, they'll be able to see where their crew is. So if someone is working in that area and then has to leave or um, abruptly stops, everyone who picks up after them can do a quick refresh on their web browser and see what's going on in the field so that that work isn't being duplicated and everyone stays in the know. Same for um, the director um, could easily look out and see where the field crew is. Um, it's keeping everyone informed of what has been done and where the process is going. And their last challenge was, as I mentioned, they didn't have any GIS experience before this. So they needed to generate a system that would really carve out a specific process of using different GIS tools that would allow them to continuously update this data. So they were able to do that by exporting or linking that data from Unity into ArcGIS Online and then pulling that into ArcPro and they could run different processing tools from there. And this is where it gets into a little bit of create your own journey. Um, so this is what worked best for them was running an append tool to incorporate their new data that was collected into their existing data set. And any points that were updated would be listed as a double um, based on their asset ID. So running something like frequency tool would allow them to locate the duplicated points, then they could run some quality control, making sure those fields were properly filled out. And then after seeing those two points, the point that was updated could be, the previous point could be removed. And then ultimately they could add a relate to any work orders of inspections, um, different exercising, things like that moving forward so that they have their original feature class that has the fields that they need. And then the additional work order could be related based on the asset ID. So ultimately they were able to create a framework for how their data would be set up moving forward. They had a very specific process and standardized approach that would allow them, even if someone left, even if um, they wanted to incorporate new things, they've already set this baseline in expectation of where the how the data is going to look um, in that it was spread out amongst different field crew members giving them information so that if one of them left after the training they'd be able to can keep this going so that five years from now it's not we have this data but we're not sure how good it is because someone left and ultimately it's allowing them to make more informed decisions because they're having a better idea of what's going on in their system and where it's located Um, so that about, I'm not sure how I did on time. Okay, I've got a couple minutes left, but that about wraps up everything I have. I just wanted to highlight how they were able to go from three different applications and a paperwork order system to having one uniform system that has digitalized their work order system, made it so that everyone that's working in this, um, in the utility department, those that, that, um, involved in this knew what was going on and now has a better understanding of how they can continue to keep that up to date. And I thought that was very fitting with the back to the future theme because it's bringing you from this older system that was working, um, but how they've been able to optimize that and make it better. So I hope this has maybe inspired you a bit to look at your own solution and see how you can make small changes that will ultimately make it so that it is not you who's feeling exercised um, and alleviating some of that extra stress. Um, so there we go. I thank you so much for your time this morning. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to take them. Mm -hmm.
So the question was, does it only work on Trimble units? Is that um, with the GNSS configuration? Oh, yes. So, oh, okay. So I think what you're asking is, is it only with the TDC 600s and the other devices out there? So, um, so the question was, will this only work with Trimble Android devices? And it works with iOS, tablets, Androids. Um, so yes, it'll work um, beyond just um, the hardware that you see out there that's associated with Trimble. Mm -hmm. So it goes, um, Trimble Unity will integrate into CityWorks. So they work together. So it's almost like Trimble Unity is the smaller step and then as you get bigger, then you would move to using Trimble Unity and CityWorks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I forgot to ask the last question repeated, but so I'll repeat it this time. So the question was when the data is brought out of Trimble Unity and brought back into your Arc Pro, how is that data being appended? Is that an automation? So the data will be linked back by a features class. Um, and once that feature class is linked, then as soon as those changes that are made, if you brought that feature class down from the portal into Pro, you'll be able to see those changes in real time. And then what, it depends on how you wanna do it, but you could run a model builder um, that would automate that process. If you're good at Python, you could have some kind of automation there. It's not happening for you. You would have to manually tell it, but having something that could automate it that you could configure would work well as well. Any questions on that? Okay, well, again, I thank you so much for your time and I appreciate your attention. Thank you so much, have a great day.